Now in terms of syntax errors, they're very easy to actually create. We just need to leave off a semicolon. You can see we're working with the basic types in the scripting basics section. We can just go in there and see that we have a scripting error. Very easy to do that. We've been seeing this a few times here. I've been pretty good about not having too many. But at the same time, it can happen anywhere. Now you need to have your parentheses closed. You can check out the forms. You can check out the for loops. You can check out if conditions. You need to have your brackets. And if you have a closing bracket, for example, you're going to get that type of scripting error. This is just to give you the details. We can't go through all the syntax errors, but when they pop up, they give you the line number. If you're doing it this way, maybe you're using the Zend editor and then you have a more robust debugging tool. Well, it's just letting you know you're missing something, a curly brace here, and it's on line 40 of that page. And not all the time does it actually pick the right line. You can see that it's expecting this, but it's telling us that this was unexpected. It was unexpected because this didn't happen. So if you think in terms of logic, if something happens that wasn't supposed to happen or something doesn't happen and then something else happens, well, that's unexpected. So it can happen anywhere. You forget a parenthesis or what have you. You just have to keep an eye on it and know that every parenthesis needs a opening and a closing parenthesis for the set. Same thing with the curly braces. Same thing for the arrays and the brackets for that. And you just have to keep an eye on it. The most common is when you forget to put your dollar sign there. Bool will work, but something else might not work. And you're going to get something here as well. But this didn't actually give you an error for some reason because you're checking if this is a string. So you can see that it doesn't always happen. But if you just type something here and you can see that leads to a parsing error and that's a syntax error. So if we put a dollar sign there, everything's going to be fine. So you'll get the idea. When you work with things, if you miss something with the include statements, you'll see something there too. We've already taken a look at that in the include section. So you want to take a look there again to get more ideas about how the includes work. You just need to find the right path. I already simulate some errors there, so we don't have to do that again. But syntax errors are, are pretty much easy to solve. Once you understand what's going on, PHP is one of the easiest languages to fix as far as syntax errors are concerned. And like I said, if you're using the more elaborate scripting text editors, then of course you're going to get better debugging conditions. But you can see this is pretty easy. It's just really an alt tab into another screen and you get them right there just by refreshing. So you can effectively do PHP or most of the beginner intermediate PHP outside of maybe object-oriented PHP. You can get away with it just like this with a browser and something like Dreamweaver or even just a text editor.